Welcome to the Shot Clock, everybody. Ben Mankiewicz and Dave Rubin. It is Thursday, Throwback Thursday. We thought we'd start with a classic. Well, they're all classics. This one's almost as good as it gets. This is as good. And as you're listening to this, uh, I want you to think about who the real MVP here is because uh, uh, I have the definitive MVP in this video. It is uh, Malice at the Palace, Pistons, Pacers, Artest, and Ben Wallace. The Pacers have played a very intelligent game tonight. Ben Wallace is fouled, and Wallace did. Oh, Wallace right at our test. This has potential to be serious if they don't get between. Wallace upset. Players trying to hold each other off. Steven Jackson on the Wallace trying to be peacemakers. Now Jackson yelling. Now our test has jumped over the scorer's table and is trying to get down to the bench. Test is in the stands. Oh, this is awful. Fans are getting involved. Steven Jackson's in the fans. Rasheed Wallace going into the stands. The security trying to somehow restore order. Fans and players are going at it, and the players trying to help each other out. So when I said as good as it gets, I meant uh, not in terms of basketball acumen, <laughs> just sort of sheer lunacy. Yeah, that was uh, 2004. Um, uh, obviously, Pistons, Pacers. So I mentioned the MVP. The MVP, no question. Mike Breen. He is. By far. Yeah. I mean, as soon as that punch comes for him to say, this could get ugly. Like he was, <laughs> I mean, he previewed it for you. He was like, oh, no, this is not good. This is not going to be. And then, because, of course, there's the great moment where Rasheed Wallace serves as the peacemaker. Rasheed Wallace. That makes you wonder. Serves as the peacemaker. Uh, that was a... That was a bad night for the NBA. That so, was a very bad night for the NBA. Yeah, before I get to my personal anecdote on this, um, doesn't this, isn't it, when you look back on it, it almost seems like it's a different league now. Because think about it, this wasn't, that wasn't the bad boys Pistons team. No. This was literally, what, 15 years, I think, or so after, or 14 years after that team had broken up. The league had cleaned itself up pretty yeah. clean. And then this happened. You cannot imagine anything like that happening these days, right? Like, no, no, no. The suspensions would be... Uh, I mean, Stephen Jackson, I think now uh, in this era, Stephen Jackson, well, first our test, but then Jackson coming into the stands and, and, and clocking another fan. Yeah. My, I think those guys would lose the whole season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and... Uh, but, of course, they, they did drop the hammer on our test, David Stern did, and that was the beginning. It was almost, in, in a sense, the beginning of the era of player discipline that we're seeing now. Yeah. Much more aggressive across all sports for violence. So do you remember where you were when you saw that highlight? No, I didn't see it until the next day. I didn't I, see it until the next day. Well, I do remember exactly where I was because it was turning into the one, one of the best weekends of my life. I had been doing stand-up for about six years or so, and I was at Bananas Comedy Club in Poughkeepsie, New York. I think I was doing nine shows over three days with Bobcat Goldthwait. Nice. I, I was opening for the Bobcat, and we had six shows. I, so three on Thursday, three on Friday. We had just finished up. And it was amazing. I was signing autographs for the first time. I could not have been happier. I, this, is the, this is the life. Right. This is my, the rest of my life. And then I got back to the hotel room. The comedy club was actually in the hotel. It was in a Best Western. And I remember thinking, wow, I just did three shows, Bobcat, tons of people. It was standing room only. And then, I re and then for like an hour, I was in my hotel room alone. Like, and then I realized, wow, I'm just like a road comic. And I was all depressed suddenly after feeling so great. And then that came on, and I, and I just forgot all my problems. <laughs> so it's a very memorable night. By the way, that's such a great little high-low of being a comic right there, that, Oh, that's it. I right. mean, that's why comedians go nuts. Bananas right. in Poughkeepsie with right. Bobcat. Right. And you you're, have this exhilarating moment, and then a minute later, you're like, I'm so lonely. I'm, I'm eating so Skittles very lonely. in a bed in Poughkeepsie. Jason, our producer, Jason Rubin, what was the, uh, what was the date on that? November 19th, 2004. So we're ago. talking about probably about two weeks after really maybe the most depressing political night of my life. Uh, Jenk and I did the Young Turks uh, uh, on, on, in November, whenever the election was on November. And we were so confident in a John Kerry win. Just so confident that, that America had turned its back on and then that went south. So I don't know, maybe I was not ready to come out of whatever sort of d d Bush induced depression that I had found myself in uh, that night. But I definitely, I read about it in the paper. I remember reading about it in the Los Angeles Times before finding the video of it. Yeah. And the Bush thing worked itself out. So yeah, everything went, everything, everything turned, went fine. Everything so, turned out great in the end. Yeah. 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 There <laughs> should have been suspensions involved yeah. in that, but you know, that's all I was doing.